ooh, ooh, big fish ish. Y'all know what it is. All right, so we're back. We got another book review. This time around, we got Your Next Five Moves by Patrick Bet David. But before I get into touching on the first part of this book and how it hit me, I want to tell y'all with how I even came to read this book. So if you guys aren't familiar with Patrick Bet David, he has a podcast or actually I would say a platform I'm a network called Valuetainment on YouTube. I'm not sure what other platforms they're streaming on, but I'm sure they're on a bunch. But it's the number one in the world for entrepreneurs. So this is something that I look at on the daily. You know, I'm always tapping in, listening, not only figuring out, uh, you know, how I can, you know, educate myself on the topics that they're talking about, anything from business to politics, um, same thing, right? Um, but not only educating myself on those aspects, but also figuring out how to develop a successful network on YouTube. They've done a tremendous job. So I watched Patrick Bet David, been watching him for a couple years now, um, and always saw this book in the back of, you know, whenever he'd be on his podcast, there was this book just sitting there. I didn't even know that he wrote the book. Um, I guess I wasn't in tune as I needed to be. But I always saw this book, Your Next Five Moves, whenever, you know, he was doing the podcast. So um, I was already reading Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. That's the one that I did a bunch of uh, book reviews on um, last week and before. But I came across this by way of looking for, so I lost my Remarkable, which is I'm going to do a little cheap plug for Remarkable. Um, They're pretty much a notebook that you can write on like, I don't know, those old, I don't even know how to describe it, but you're writing down notes, but it's all digital. And then you can upload on your computer, whatever. I like writing, so it helps me, but it also helps me keep track of my notes. However, I was looking for this and I don't even know how I even found this book. I didn't even know I had this book. I still don't know how it got in my house. Um, I'm almost now thinking that um, about a year or two ago, I was in my apartment and I was walking um, from my car, getting on the elevator, and somebody left out a bunch of books. And I'm thinking maybe this was one of those books because I just happened to be turning my office upside down while looking for that remarkable, which wasn't in the office, it was down here in Miami. Um, but I came across this book. So I pulled it to the side. I was like, yo, your next five moves. And then I looked on it, I was like, oh shit. I said, Patrick Bet David, he's the dude that I didn't know that he wrote the book. I thought he was just advertising the book because it was impactful in his life. I didn't even know that he wrote it. So, neither here nor there, there was a lot of alignment there. A lot of alignment. And especially after reading, you know, Andrew Carnegie's book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, and then Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich, who learned from Andrew Carnegie. Reading this afterwards, is like, I, I don't know, it's like a cheat code to business, to life, to relationships, to family, to friends. Uh, th- th- that's just what I've been feeling. I- I'm about to probably finish this book tomorrow, and I only started it last week. And, all right, so there's just a lot of energy. That's That was the main, I was trying to give you guys context to give the energy, um, because everything that we've been speaking about, especially over the last few weeks, has been aligning ourselves with the right opportunities. So this book, you know, I saw it. I said, wow, it must be meant for me to read this. So I started reading it that day. And there's just been a lot of alignment. And y'all know me, well, at least maybe the new viewers don't, but I pull up on people. You know, if if somebody has an impact in my life or I think that they're doing something cool or if there's somebody that, you know, I aspire to um, be like in a particular area and they're around, I'm just going to pull up. I'm just going to come to your office, introduce myself. Um, You know, I'm going to figure out a little bit beforehand how I may be able to add some value to some of the stuff that you're already doing. Um, So that's, you know, I started putting my game plan hat on because I found out, well, I knew that he was right in Florida, in Fort Lauderdale. You know, I'm down in Miami. I was like, I got to pull up on him. I got to pull up. I got to let him know that I'm here. I got to let him, um, you know, know the value that I bring, what I'm looking to build. And especially reading his book, and as I'm going to touch on, he asked an important question, and that question really inspired me to just say, you know what, I'm going to meet him. So, y'all know I follow alignment, something comes up, an opportunity, I see it as I have to follow it, a door is open, I'm like, oh, there's an opportunity to go there, this book was just 
put in front of my face. I have no idea how it got in my house, uh, but I'm just going to go see him. So I, uh, <laughs> I pull up and I go see, uh, I go to the office and I had to figure out first and foremost where his office was. So I looked at the, I, I found some of like the real, the real estate notes um, when he was, I guess, getting his deal done. And I found out the old building where it was. They said, you know, Patrick Bet David, he pe purchased this building. That's where his new office was. So it didn't have any, you know, signage on there or anything like that. But I said, you know what, let me try. So, of course, I go there. And this is the, the lift ride. If you guys heard me talk about the, the lift driver, the lady that was real interesting. Um, but she took me there. And I get there and I see, you know, the valuetainment signs on the, on the building and everything. So I'm like, all right, I'm in the right place. There were cars in the parking lot because it was Good Friday. Um, so I figured, you know what, they're still working. Like, they, they're workaholics. They, they get to it. So I, I kind of just I got out the car, and I sat down for a sec. I sat down in the front, kind of, you know, scoped the scene out a little bit. And then I got my, you know, little you know, pitch together, kind of like my little pregame. And I saw a couple people pass by. They said, hello, we're friendly. So I said, you know what? Um, I'm getting ready to head in. So I got enough, you know, got a little juice in me, got ready to get up, head in. There was a young lady walking up and she was looking to get in the building too. And this is actually, she walked up after me because I was pressing the buzzer. Nobody was answering. There was nobody at the front desk, I guess. So I kept pressing it, knocking on the door, um, you know, whatever. So somebody eventually, when she came up, she was like, yeah, usually somebody's at the front desk. And I said, oh, OK. So she somebody eventually, you know, either heard me knocking or just happened to be passing by a gentleman, not going to share any names, but he passed by and he opened the door. He saw I said, no, you go first to the young lady. Um, you know, she spoke to him. She's like, yeah, well, you know, her dad just so happens to be one of one of um, Patrick's partners on the show. So she was just there to, you know, go grab lunch. Uh, so now I'm sitting in there in the waiting room. So, you know, she's there. Obviously, she tells him she's just here to grab lunch. He's like, he's like OK, cool. He works with Valuetainment. And then he, you know, all attention goes to me. And <laughs> this is this is when you got to have your pitch right. This is when you got to have, you know, your confidence is everything, your swag, whatever that may be, uh, because the confidence is going to show more than anything else. So I got in my zone. I got in my zone. I told him, like, no, you know, I'm here. Uh, you know, came down from Jersey, actually, I was looking to, you know, see if I could bring, you know, some value. And I had some value to bring to the value team and team. So I told him I had some value to bring. Um, you know, he was asking me like, hey, you know, what exactly are you here for? And meanwhile, another young lady, she heard what was going on. So she walked out. I guess she wanted to, you know, see what was going on because they were taken back. And like, yo, you just you know, like, why, why are you here? You know, what made you come in? Like you just normally people call or send an application if they're looking for a job. And that's when the young lady, she said, oh, like I was saying a bunch of stuff that was exactly what I meant. But she thought that I was just saying a bunch of stuff to pretty much like apply for a position. Um, so she said, are you looking for a job? I said, oh, I said, oh, absolutely not. I said, like, no offense, but I'm not looking for No, I'm good there. Like, I, I'm not looking for a job at all. I said, what I'm looking for is to bring some value. You know, you guys are named Valuetainment, and I feel that I have a unique value that I can bring to the table. Um, I've already received a tremendous value from Valuetainment, and I'd like to figure out if there's something that we can do together to help build and um, impact the community in an even bigger way, you know, if I can help. So she's looking at me like now nah, she's a little bit interested, and I'm already, you know, in my zone. Like, I'm ready to answer whatever questions they have. And this this dude, uh, not I shouldn't say this dude, but cool dude, cool young dude. That's the one that first came to the door. He started, you know, they're the gatekeepers. They they can't just let somebody in. So I get it. So so there he's there, and he's like, well, you know, um, you know, uh, once he heard that I was from Jersey, he's like, yo, I'm from Jersey. You know, if you, if you're from Jersey, then you get it. If you're from Jersey, then you get it. When you see somebody else from Jersey outside of Jersey, it's a thing. I don't I don't know if that's the same thing for other states, but it's definitely a big thing when it comes to Jersey. So he was, you know, feeling that and whatnot. And I, sp I spoke to him a little bit. And, you know, they were, I'm not going to say that they were impressed, but they were intrigued a little bit 
Um, you know, they say, you know, oh, we get a lot of calls, you know, about stuff like this. And I say, yeah, I don't, I don't think so. Um, <laughs> this is different. And they were like, well, it is different because you actually like came here, like you pulled up. And I said, yeah, you know, that's what I do. You know, I'm, I gave him the whole spiel again, whatever. So then he said, all right, what are you doing later? Um, I said, I'll, I'll be around, you know, I'm going to be running around working, but you know, you can call me, whatever. So I head back, get some work done. And he probably calls me maybe about three, four hours later. It's the afternoon, um, almost evening, probably evening. And then he says, you know, we're starting. He's like, what, what exactly, you know, are you looking for? You know, what's what's the end game? So I'm straightforward. I'm like, oh, I want to be on. I see myself being, you know, as one of the the host on Patrick's show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing, but I was dead serious, and I still am dead serious. Um, but I'm laughing because of his response. Like, I knew what his response would be, or I, I assumed what it would be. So he said, oh, he said, uh, like, a host on the show? I said, yes. I said, I, you know, I have to feel that I have um, a certain value that I can bring that can fill a, fill a void that, you know, may expand um, the touch that Valuetainment already has to a different demographic. Um, that's probably not represented it, probably not represented right now, um, just based on my conversations when I share videos, uh, you know, PBD and whatnot, Patrick Bet Davis podcast, Valuetainment, a lot of my friends, are they don't know who he is. And I'm like, yo, here you got one of the most successful business dudes out here right now, also has a successful platform online. Like, how could you not? You know, like, how could you not know who this person is? He provides me a whole bunch of value. So that's what I said. All right, boom, I need to be on this show. I need to I need to make sure that I'm bringing a certain value to the show. So I'm telling the dude this and he says, <laughs> bear with me. yo. <laughs> bear with me. I know this is just a story. Tell I'm supposed to be talking about the book. Right. But y'all need to bear with me. Y'all need to hear this. So there's a lesson in it. So he he responds. He says, oh, OK. Uh, and then he says. Yeah, well, just to manage expectations, um, the chances of that happening are slim to none. <laughs> Yo. Uh, <laughs> so, meanwhile, we're still, so I'm on the call, and I'm laughing to myself, and then I, you know, he's, he's talking, and, you know, I waited for him to finish what he was saying. And he was just telling me all the reasons why it's slim to none because, you know, most of the people that work on the show, you know, close knit, they're based on relationships that he's had over the years, and, you know, stuff that I respect. So I, I told him, I said, you know, I respect all of that. Um, however, um, I do have to I said, don't don't mind me. I have to giggle a little bit um, because when, when you tell somebody like me and I said, I know you don't know who I am, um, eventually you will. Uh, so there's no way of knowing, you know there's no way for you to know who I am right now. So that's why I'm laughing because uh, you telling me that the chances of something happening are slim to none. Um, that's just, that's, that, to me, that just, <laughs> to me in my head, it's like, oh, now it's going to happen. Like now I'm making it happen. Like, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Um, not that I needed any extra inspiration or motivation, but uh, n now it's going to happen. Like now it's going to happen. And I told him, I said, when you tell somebody who's already, you know, been to a certain point, I don't think he knew that I played football. I didn't say that or anything, but um, he may have mentioned it earlier, asked me about it because I gave him my card. But I said, when you tell somebody like me who's, you know, already, you know, been through a slim to none situation and, you know, made it to the league, you know, I'm telling him, like, made it to the league, started, um, a season uh, when you tell me you know after being a free agent going to a small school not having a, a scholarship out of high school you know what I'm saying like all that yeah yeah so I'm like when you tell somebody like me slim to none <laughs> I got no I got nothing else to do but laugh at that because one I'm appreciative and two like I'm excited to see what you're about to see like I'm excited for you to see what's about to happen so I, I knew that like dude was cool like cool we're gonna build we're gonna build um we had a real good conversation um, but it was either one of two things one he just doesn't one he just has no idea who I am 
um, which is fair. And two, I didn't show him enough, I guess, in that first meeting exactly who I am. Um, so it was one or the other because just based on being around or for that little instant, um, he should have felt the energy or I should have, I should have, I'm not going to say he should have felt it. I should have, based on my actions, he should have felt it. You know what I mean? I should have forced him to feel and to understand that slim to none is where I live. That's my comfort space. Slim to none. That's like, thanks. Life was getting boring. Thank you for that. Um, it, you're just giving me a reason now. So he'll understand. He'll, he'll realize very quickly the language that I speak, how I move. And so we, we, we kept going. And normally, you know, most people would end the conversation. But I decided to ask him. I said, you know, you know tell me a little bit about. And I, and I told him actually with this, I said, I, re I referenced the book because I said, when you say slim to none, I said, well, we got to like kind of unpack that. You asked me what's my end game. Um, you didn't ask me, you know, how I would get there. I said, just like Patrick talks about, you know, your next five moves. That was, you know, one of the moves later on. That's the end game. I said, of course, you know, I don't want to sit here and think that, you know, I'm just going to pull up and just, yo, put me on the, put me on the pod. Yeah, I'm ready. And think that that's going to happen. Um, so, so I told him that and, you know, and I let him know, like, you know, when you, you're telling me a little slim to none, like that's kind of, it's, I don't know, whatever. We'll leave that there. But so we ended up, um, he told me, you know, check him out on LinkedIn, you know, follow some other people in value tainment on LinkedIn. So I definitely did that. Um, you know, follow, he told me to, you know, do a couple of things that would help. So I started asking him, I said, you know what, what's your, like, what's your end game? You know, what's your, what's your end game? You know, you told me you came down from Jersey. Um, you've been working with him for a while. Like, what's your end game? What do your next five moves look like? So what, I was really interested, like really interested. So he tells me, he says like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm looking to do, I used to write scripts. So I'm looking to get into the filmmaking industry. I was looking to go to Hollywood, wrote a bunch of scripts, sent them to Hollywood. But, um, you know, things didn't go as I thought. And, you know, right now, I'm here looking to build and eventually, you know, get back into that with the understanding that Hollywood is probably not for me. That's why it didn't work. I need to maybe go a different route, maybe a route with valuetainment or independent. So I said, oh, OK, I said, well, let me ask you a question. I said, you know, obviously, you know, those are, you know, some of your next five moves. Uh, I said, would it help to speed that process up um, if you were able to find the next hot podcaster, the next big talent. And he said, well, wait, like, well, actually, that's funny that you mentioned that because I'm actually the head of, he's a talent, um, uh, director of talent right now. So I forget the exact role, uh, but he pretty much handles the talent based on who's coming on the show, talent, you know? So, so I said, ah, that's funny. So he was telling me he does that. And in my head, I already knew what time it was. I said, oh, now I found a way that I can bring value to him, that I can help him with his next five moves. I said, just, you know, be a superstar podcaster, make it on the show, and um, makes him look good. I look good. I get the exposure. I get the, the, the community, um, you know, that I'm looking for to, to, to help promote, to help speak to, to help speak with. And it's a win-win overall. So I told him, I said, all right, well, you know, I like, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you calling me back first and foremost. Um, we're definitely going to build, like, this is just going to be the start of this relationship and um, friendship. And I'm looking forward to it. And I know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to become um, the new hottest podcaster. So that way you look good. You can, I can help you with your next five moves to expedite that process. And it's a win-win for everybody. So he starts laughing, you know, we eventually hung up and I have to say, I'm, I'm telling you this long winning story because it's all based on energy. It's all based on certain opportunities that came up that a lot of times we just disregard, but if we lean into them, then we never know what's going to come in return from me, you know, looking for something and then seeing this book. And, you know, instead of just saying, oh, that's the book that I saw. No, I'm going to pick it up. 
I'm going to start reading it. Oh, shoot. I'm a fi- Oh, that, he actually wrote it. Now I'm even more encouraged to read it. All these different things. Oh, he's writing for a lot of Oh, I'm going to pull up. Oh, let me look up the address. Oh, they just put. Okay, boom. All of these different things are just doors of opportunities. Now, I have to be smart with my time as well because I have other obligations. But um, I'm always going to, you know, follow and see what doors open um, as long as it's aligned with my overall purpose. So that was kind of the breakdown of that. And I'm sure something amazing is going to come from it. Actually already had somebody from Valuetainment just reach out on LinkedIn, just say, you know, hey, nice to connect and all that stuff. And um, I, I'm, I know something great is going to come from it. Something great already came from it. And something greater is already coming from it in the works that I may not even be aware of right now. But when the opportunity does present itself, I'm taking full advantage. I'm all in. So that's that that was kind of the context around it. But then I want to get into very quickly because I probably already talked y'all heads off for about um, 30 minutes, 20, 30 minutes. But I'm going to tell you why this book was so impactful from the beginning. Um, from the beginning, he talks about a concept. Um, he asked a question and he says that he asked questions because he learns about things. Um, you learn more through questions rather than answers. So, uh, you know, we have all the answers. You don't learn anything. So this book started off with, and I want to highlight a couple different sentences in the book. Um, so let me just get right to it. So he says, what matters to me is what you think, since all your choices will be dictated by where you want to go. Now, hold on to that for me. He asked a question. Let me read the whole the whole paragraph for y'all. Whether it's a high school student asking for direction or a CEO running a five hundred million dollar company. When someone asks me a question, I respond by saying. It all depends on how honestly you can answer this question. Who do you want to be? Who do you want to be? I don't know if that question hits y'all the same way that it hits me, but, or, you know, like I said, my energy, this just may be at this point in my life where this is just super relevant, but who do you want to be? And then he goes on. There's another sentence. I'll show you why making a plan and committing to it will unleash all the energy and discipline you'll ever need. So I know these are a little bit all over the place, but hang with me. Um, Those who can uh, let me not get into that one. Uh, The only thing separating us from greatness is a vision and a plan for achieving greatness. When you're fighting for a cause, a dream, something greater than yourself, you will find the enthusiasm, passion, and joy that make life a great adventure. The key is identifying your cause and knowing who you want to be. The key is identifying your cause and knowing who you want to be. So I just want to stay there for a sec. In the book, he talks about who do you want to be? Who do you want to be? That, for me, requires a lot of self-reflection. I think about my purpose. I think about my mission while I'm here. I think about how the the impact that I want to make on this this planet, um, all the way from a global standpoint to just within my family, as a son, as a brother, um, as a husband one day, as a father one day. I think about all these things. Who do you want to be? And it's a question that we don't ask ourselves too much. And it's funny because now that I'm thinking about it, I we, we talked about this in the other book review um, where, you know, you, you we're not asked who do you want to be unless we're in like, what, kindergarten, pre-K, first grade, And then it starts to turn into, what do you want to do? You know, what do you want to study? You know, it's just a a little bit of a different, what do you want to be? Not necessarily, who do you want to be? And those, to me, are two totally different questions. 
Um, I, and maybe that's just how I'm looking at it or choose to look at it based on, you know, the book. But who do I want to be? That's purpose driven. That's purpose driven. That's cause. All those things that he mentioned. Um, having a cause. Having a mission. And when, when somebody asks me who I want to be, when you ask somebody who believes that they can be anything that they decide that they want to be, who they want to be, it hits hard. Let me say that again. If you believe that you can accomplish, be anything that you want to be, um, do anything that you want to do, when somebody asks you who you want to be, it's a heavier question. Um, there's no ceilings. There's no boundaries. Um, it's a very... It's a very real conversation that we don't have with ourselves. So for him to ask me who I want to be, it, it's, it, like I said, it was heavy. And it made me process things. And it made me, I don't want to say, you know, have a different level of urgency. But it just confirmed a lot of things as far as where my focus needs to be. That's what it did. It confirmed a lot of things as far as where my focus needs to be. And then the follow-up question that he asked is just as important, or maybe even more important, than the first question is, who do you want to be? And that follow-up question is, who are you right now? <sighs> I'm trying to tell y'all, man. Who are you right now? So you, you, you start off, let me, let me put things in perspective for y'all. If you think that you, if you know that you can accomplish anything, you become anything, and then you're asked the question, who do you want to be? It's already heavy. It's already a lot of self-reflection. It's already um, focusing on a lot of purpose. All these things, it's a lot. But then to ask the follow-up question of who you are, See, that's where the honesty, the accountability comes in. Me being honest with who I am right now. Um, and there's a lot that goes into that where if I'm honest about who I am right now, I also have to take full accountability or I will take full accountability in that I am who I am right now because of me. It's nobody else's fault. Whether I, if I'm not where I want to be, that's my fault. Accountability. Um, so therefore, those two questions and that second question, when you're processing and self-reflecting on who we are right now, if we're honest about that, then we can devise a plan to get to who we want to be. But if we're not honest with who we are today, who we are right now, in the most humble way, y'all know I don't like using that word in, in different ways, but who we are right now, who we are right now, if we're honest, then we can devise a plan to get to wherever we want to get to and to become whoever we want to become. But if we're not honest with ourselves, then there's no way. We don't have a, start, a proper starting point. It's almost like putting in directions from somewhere. Um, you know, I'm in Jersey trying to get directions to New York. But y'all are putting in directions from Montana to get to Nebraska. Or even if it's from Montana to get to New York, I'm still, it doesn't do me any good. I'm in Jersey. Directions on how to get from, from, I need to figure out how to get from Jersey to New York. Directions on how to get from Maine to New York. And this is bad. I should have used some different states. But you telling me how to get from Maine to get to New York ain't really going to help me, all right? So y'all yeah, get what I'm saying. I was about to use another analogy, but I don't want to bore y'all with that. But those two things, so maybe those are two things that we can focus on. Who do we want to be? Who do you want to be? And who are you right now? And dream big on who you want to be with the understanding that is going to take a lot of discipline, a lot of hard work, a lot of sacrifice, a lot of integrity, all these different things. 
but believe it that that's really who you want to be. And then be super honest with who you are right now. Because if you're not super honest with who you are right now, you'll never have a plan to get to where you want to get to. So I'll leave y'all with that. Make sure y'all check out your next five moves. It's a game changer. Uh, I'm looking forward to this. And look out for the book club. We got a book club coming soon with OG.com. So we'll definitely be uh, diving in some books and then, you know, I guess taking the journey together. Uh, but I'm, um, I'm encouraged. I'm inspired. Uh, y'all know I don't really care about the word motivated, but I'm, I'm inspired. I'm inspired. And I know, I know what's about to happen. And I'm just excited for it. So I'm going to get to work. Y'all get to work. And uh, I'll see y'all at the top. Onward and upward. Ooh.